Apex Legends has a lot of settings that will give you a huge advantage when tuned properly, but if you haven't been around for a long while, while keeping attention to every single forum post or viral TikTok, odds are you probably have missed out on a lot of them. So we are going to go over all of the settings that you need to perform your best in Apex Legends. In this very video, I will cover gameplay enhancing settings, not video settings or anything like that, but I will be making an update video on that in the future. So, you know, make sure to keep your eyes on that. But without further ado, let's dive into it and start off with the gameplay tab. The interact prompt style will change how the item played looks whenever you are in game. By default, they are this big, but if you turn it to compact, it will take up way less space on your screen and it decreased the risk of missing an important detail because the item plate was blocking the way. As for button hints, they don't really matter. You can decide to either enable or disable whether you want to see consistent button prompts for your weapons and abilities or not, but the difference is marginal at best, and if you're like me with terrible memory, odds are you might want to keep this one turned on just in case you happen to forget what key it is to open a map or whatever. As I understand it, this next one might be a bit controversial. Crosshair damage feedback, in my very opinion, and in the opinion of many, should be set to X with icon. It's controversial because some players claim that it does help with tracking if you don't have a distracting large cross in the way, but if you don't suffer from golden retriever puppy syndrome, you are better off with a shield with X icon because you can see your damage and you can also see the shield icon giving you all of the information that you need, and obviously the more you know, the better so I would keep it on. As for damage numbers, this one is also a bit of a preference, but out of the options, I will always choose stacking over floating or even over both, since it is very hard to get a good read of the total amount of damage that you do with floating, because you just see the small numbers. And if you do choose both, there's just a lot of unnecessary information that just clogs your brain. You need to know how much damage you actually do, so you can scream at your teammates how much damage they have to do instead of just screaming that they're one shot. As for ping opacity, I prefer it to be faded because pings can be distracting and get in the way of what you're trying to see. Obituaries should always be on. There's no reason to turn this one off, you're just turning off the kill feed, really. As for minimap rotation, I have heard some players swear by having this enabled, where the minimap will rotate instead of the player themselves. And maybe this comes down to what game you came from initially, but I find it a lot easier to read the minimap at a quick glance and actually communicate directions like, you know, west, north, and south, and whatever the last one is. If the minimap rotation rotation is off. And for weapon auto cycle on empty, I will recommend turning this one off. But it's worth noting this is my personal preference. If you have this turned on, the game will automatically try to swap to your other weapon if your primary ends up running out of ammo, but I feel like it takes away control from the player and it may lock me in a weapon switch animation that I don't want to get if I want to fall back or pick up a grenade or switch of an angle, which is just really frustrating. As for auto sprint, as a mouse and keyboard player, I would rather have this off, but if you are on controller, I can't can see why you would want this on. It is just more convenient. It's a bit more tricky to start running on controller versus mouse and keyboard. And it's worth noting that historically having auto sprint on has been seen as a bad thing because it slows down how fast you can go from moving to shooting. So I would rather start manually sprinting when I feel like it. I do have to mention that some higher level movement players swear by auto running as it helps with some complex movement techniques. So it is ultimately up to you, whichever feels better. And speaking of sprinting, this next setting sort of builds off that as well, but it is very often misunderstood. If this very setting is turned on by double tapping the sprint key, your character will keep sprinting until you hit that backwards or sprint key again, sort of like an auto run if you played any other games. But I don't see any use for kicking back and chilling in a game like Apex unless you're playing on a large boring map like Storm Point, but honestly, even then, I'd keep this off. But let's move on with some settings that you may hear about more often. Jetpack control decides whether your Valkyrie jetpack stays on as long as you hold the jump key or ends up getting toggled just by you hitting it. I've always recommended keeping this on hold because it allows a more fine control with the jetpack and it makes it a lot easier to do certain movement techniques. Incoming damage feedback decides how you want to be alerted where damage is coming from and after playing around with both for a while, I think that the most reliable out of the two will be 3D. There is an option for both, but then you kind of get into the same situation that I mentioned previously where there might be too much information going on at the same time. And this next setting is really important and it's probably one of the most important ones in this video. Taking damage closes death box or crafting menu is honestly pretty self-explanatory and it should just be set to off because if you don't you're going to get stuck in a death box you're gonna hear the enemy come around the corner you take damage which closes the box but you already heard enemy and were prepared to close the looting so you end up opening your inventory screen 
and then that gets taken down because you take damage and you're already prepared to take the looting screen down again. So you open the inventory screen again because it's the same bind to open and close and then you're dying very frustrated. It also makes it like impossible to swap an armor or craft in zones, so I don't recommend it at all. The hop-up pop-up is a very silly name and I think Respawn just put this in to be goofy, but it is a setting that determines if the UI element that displays information about your hop-up will show if a hop-up is attached to your weapon. You could turn this off to save some visual space, but it's a marginal difference. Next up, despite its name, I'm going to have to say that streamer mode may actually serve some use for non-streamers as well. While the main purpose of streamer mode is to give less power to whoever kills you by hiding their name if they do kill you, which is useful if you're getting, say, stream sniped, it does serve some other use for the normal player as well. By making all player names anonymized, instead of seeing names, you will start seeing the legend that they are playing followed by a bunch of numbers. This gives you an additional level of information through the kill feed, namely what legends people are running, not just their name, which is extremely helpful if you are, say, reading the kill feed to figure out what enemies are knocked in a team fight in front of you and whether you would want to third party or not. As for anonymous mode, I am not sure this serves any purpose for most players that use it. It will make your own name anonymized in the same way that the streamer mode would make the enemies anonymous, but unless you are a well-known figure in the community, I don't think it serves a purpose. I guess if you aren't really well-known, turning on anonymous mode might make other people assume that you may be a sweaty streamer or something, so maybe it will be more likely that you end up getting third partied in a large fight or whatever, so if you do want to up the difficulty and get third party more, go for it. Usage sharing doesn't really do much, and it's just another way for EA to make money off of you, so it's your call whether you want to keep this enabled or not. I mean, you are playing the game for free, after all. I cannot recommend keeping performance display on enough, as this gives you incredibly important information about your computer and the network performance data in the top right. It shows vital information such as your frames per second, your ping to the server in addition to loss and choke, which if high is a pretty bad thing. Club invites is entirely up to you. I actually had no idea you could turn these off, so I actually did that just now, but it doesn't really matter. The communication filter decides who you can receive text and voice chat from if you don't want to hear from toxic randoms anymore by shutting out the communication abilities of any randoms that you might face in the game. This might be the setting for you. As for the reticle, I cannot stress customizing this enough. The default reticle is generally not as good as it can be. Now, there's no exact science to how customizing your crosshair works, and I recommend just playing around with it and see what works the best for you. I mean, in my case, I have a slight color blindness when it comes to reds, yellows, and shades of whites. They very easily blend together in very hectic situations. Personally, I need to avoid all of those colors for something as important as the crosshair that should be a stark contrast to the game itself. While it is a little bit imperfect, I have found the best results with a neon green crosshair because, again, you want to find one that stands out against the background environment the most. In this case, I really only struggle against enemies in grass, but I can deal with that. But what about the laser sights? It literally doesn't matter. You are just adjusting the color of this tiny little beam on the side. It doesn't serve any gameplay purpose, except adding a bit of spice to SMG gameplay, I guess. But anyways, let's move down into the accessibility options, and even if you don't have any need for extra accessibility, some of these settings may be useful for you anyways. Perfect example, the first one on the row. If you have been looking at a few other settings videos before mine, or just in the past, you might have heard lots of players recommend turning on the colorblind mode. This is because using a colorblind mode does help if you have colorblindness, because obviously. But in some cases, it also changes the color of the digital threat or the crosshair itself which you weren't able to do until very recently. So historically, if you were like me struggling with red against plenty of colors, I found that the sharp yellow that Tritonopia provided really helps. But other than changing the bright's primary colors, the colorblind modes do change up the look of the game in a few other ways. As for Tritonopia, it sort of lowers the contrast with your menus, the inventory screen, and more compared to the base game. And as I have grown accustomed to these smoother colors, I literally cannot swap back. If you do get eye strain with the normal settings, testing one of the colorblind modes might be the play. Subtitles is completely up to you. I have seen some players have it on, but I honestly don't see the point. Obviously, unless they have hearing issues. But even then, there's almost never anything important important enough to need subtitles in this game, meaning you're adding a lot of unnecessary visual clutter when you don't want it. After that, we have some accessible chat features, where the only one being useful for a player that doesn't need extra accessibility could be play incoming text chat as speech, but it's honestly super distraction, so I would just keep it off. But anyways, let's close out the gameplay tab, and let's head on over to the mouse and keyboard tab. If you aren't a mouse and keyboard player, you can just skip ahead from this part because we will cover audio next. But first, thank you for still playing mouse and keyboard. You are a really brave boy. 
I know you needed to hear that. We are not going to cover sensitivities and that type of stuff in this very video because I have made so many more videos about that already, but I want to go over a few settings that you might want to consider. First, you want to bind scroll wheel to the secondary move forward. Personally, I use scroll up because that feels right for me and this allows you to tap strafe. Secondly, you want to bind the other scroll wheel direction, in my case that being down, to jump. This makes it easier to bunny hop and pull up certain movement techniques. As for crouch toggle and crouch hold, you could choose to only have one of these bound, but I've found that having a toggle on C and hold on control allows me to decide which one of these two I would want to use in the moment, and while I primarily use the hold crouch, I do find myself toggling from time to time, just sitting around or maybe if I want to super glide. And if you want to decide whether you want to have your aim down sights as a hold or as a toggle, scroll down a little bit where you can set your right click or whatever button you use to either the hold or the toggle version. You might even notice that I actually have both bound, with hold on right click and toggle on P. That's because I bound toggle when I played Seer and Comp Apex so I could stand in a corner, aim down sights to enable the wall hack and then just lean back in a chair for 10 minutes. But anyways, without further ado, let's check out the audio settings. And of course, as a thank you for watching this far, you are probably expecting there to be some magic setting that will allow you to hear your enemies more often and better so you don't get, you know, no audio. Me, it's other people just not caring. Or like the plan is to respond to the other guys. It's, it's getting the complacent ones. Audio would be awesome. Let me tell you, that absolutely does not exist. However, while this tab does consist of some basic things like master volume, output device, voice chat, input device, and that type of stuff, there are a few settings that may be worth tweaking. First off, the voice chat record mode. Set this to push to talk, you goddamn lunatics. If you are tired of hearing your teammates, you can also set incoming voice chat volume to zero. Going down into advanced, I recommend keeping sound effects volume and dialogue volume at 100. I recommend keeping the sound effects volume and the dialogue volume at 100. But if you are tired of hearing legends talk all the time, you could turn the dialogue volume off, but you will miss some crucial voice lines and it may hurt your game sense, so I don't recommend it. As for the music volume, I also recommend turning this one off to avoid adding unnecessary audio which could block audio cues. I personally turn the lobby music volume and the normal music volume off because after over 10,000 hours, I've heard it all already. Sound and background is also a personal preference, but I keep it on so I know if something happens if I do tap down to reply to any of the comments on my videos. And uh, yeah, those are all of the gameplay settings that you might need. If you set the settings to the exact same, odds are you'll become a predator in no time. If this helped, hit the like, subscribe so you don't miss the video settings down the line, and of course, I'll see you all tomorrow. Peace out.